My name is Riley Franklin, and I did my science group project on allergies and cross-contamination. I chose to do it on allergies and cross-contamination because my five-year-old brother, Callum, is severely allergic to peanuts, and I wanted to spread awareness to those people who don't know much about allergies or cross-contamination. Okay, here is my legend, and now I'll tell you my question. My question is, can food allergens be easily transferred from one food or object to different food or objects. My hypothesis is, yes, I do believe that food allergens can be easily transferred from one thing to another. My materials. White self adhesive foam board, styrofoam plate, your glitter, which is your allergen, tester EpiPen, Xbox controller with a clip on it, McDonald's basketball, and a travel mug. I chose to do these objects, but you can do whatever objects you want. And now I'm going to show you the steps and method. I decided to do my experiment on my kitchen island as it gave me more space. I cleaned and sterilized the kitchen counter and then turned off all ceiling fans to control the airflow in the kitchen so the glitter didn't go poof or fly everywhere. I observed if any of the glitter allergen would transfer from my hands to the objects I chose to work with. Step one. I already have step I already have through step one and three, but step one is get out all the materials you need. Step two is trace with the real bread this and then cut it out with the scissors. And Step four, peel the lemon sheet off the bread. And then place it on a circle plate. Then take your glitter allergen and make sure you have enough so it will get on your hands. Now take a bite of your delicious hazelnut butter. That's a little dry, so I think I'm going to take a drink from the traffic box. That's tasty. Okay, I'm gonna take another bite. Now, just place them all. Okay, now I'm gonna take the last bite. Okay, that was a good hazelnut butter sandwich, but now I think I'm gonna play my games. Oh yes, I'm super good at this game. Okay, my round's over. So, let's get back to the presentation. Oh no, looks like there might have been peanuts in there. Time to grab the EpiPen and self-administer for more dangerous symptoms of anaphylactic shock set in. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to use the EpiPen. Normally in commercials, you hear blue to the sky, or to the thigh. So, there is steps on it, but if somebody's anaphylactic shock right in front of you, you don't wanna have to say, wait, and read one, two, three. So, you're just going to take the blue cap off, hold firmly in your hand, and inject it into your thigh. You're going to hear the click. Then you're going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're going to take it off. You're going to see this orange part has popped up. Unless it's a trainer EpiPen, you do not want to push it back in or the needle would be exposed. Now, my data. Well, the data was gathered from two food allergy groups with help of my mom, because it was on Facebook. It was, one was Food Allergy Moms and the other was NNMG, Food Allergic Families of Ontario. I asked in the survey, have you or your child slash children had an allergic reaction due to cross contamination? If so, please select the allergen they reacted to. We had a total of 2,353 people participate in the survey and as you can see here, the no's were 1,012, the yeses were 1,341. Now if you want to see the allergen they reacted to, this kind of surprised me because all you hear about is on the news and everywhere is peanut, 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 peanut. But if I listed you the top three from this, it would be dairy, egg, then peanut. That's kind of surprising. Now I want to tell you the top eight allergens. 
There's dairy, egg, fish, shellfish, tree nut, peanut, wheat, and soybean. Now my conclusion. In conclusion, I found that allergens can easily transfer from one thing to another. Although I suspected transfer would take place, I did not realize how easily it could actually happen. Um, application and life experience. Although I do not believe that I can really go much further with cross-contamination in this aspect, I would like to research the most effective way to avoid cross-contamination is also the most effective way to clean when it comes to allergens. Is it soap and water, Lysol wipes, etc.? Cross-contamination can happen anywhere, anytime, at home, in school, in restaurants, and in any public setting. Now, for real life experiences, I'm going to tell you about home. We are not allow any peanut products in our house because of cow's allergy. But when we happen to eat something that may contain, we immediately wash our hands, brush our teeth, and wipe everything down that we could have touched with Lysol wipes. Now for restaurant. We do not eat at restaurants often because of cow's allergy. When we do, we have to speak with the waiter, speak with management to make sure that cross contamination does not happen. Now school. Thankfully, our school has been amazing so far with Cal's allergy. My mom and his teachers are always in contact to making sure to keep him safe. If he is seeming to have some sort of reaction, my mom is always called and he is then picked up. While my mom is arriving to the school, there's always a teacher right by his side until my mom arrives. Luckily, first we go to a nut-free school, but not every kid is lucky enough to go to a school where there are allergies in the present. Like if somebody had a dairy allergy at our school, we hand out milk at lunch. Now for public. There's not a whole lot you can do, but in a public setting, we check our surroundings, especially in the summer, when the neighbors like to feed the squirrels peanuts. Before Callan can even go outside and play, you have to do a yard sweep to make sure there's no peanut shells in the ground. Okay, so now that we're done with that, I'm going to tell you about the pictures and the facts. So that picture down there is Callum at one of his yearly allergist appointments for testing. This one right here is his first time going into anaphylactic shock at three years old. He was given 5 ml Benadryl, 2 doses of steroids, 1 EpiPen, and for the first few hours of a minimum 6 hour stay, there was a nurse right by his side. That was to goldfish crackers. We found from testing he was anaphylactic to paprika, but his last allergist appointment, he turned up negative for paprika. He goes for a food challenge in March. This one right here where his eye is really swollen, it happened like this. He was at home and went to the hospital. Allergic reaction February 1st, 2019. To this day, we still do not know what happened, but he was given a dose of steroids and then sent home. This one down here where he's a baby, it was an allergic reaction at 14 months old. You could see the hives on his face which covered, which covered most of his body, and he was given 5 ml of Benadryl and sent home. And we don't know what happened there either. Now I'm going to tell you some facts. Did you know that 7.5% of children and adults have at least one food allergy? And 2.6 million Canadians, including almost 500,000 children, have at least one food allergy, and in allergic individuals, a food protein is mistakenly identified as being harmful by the immune system. And over here, if you want to look into where I got most of my application question hypothesis, you can see resources down here, and definitions right here of what is cross-contamination, allergy, and anaphylactic shock. Thank you for listening, and do you have any questions?